things like that. I'm, I'm doing something that's part of God's character. That's part of what God does. Like, we're, we're, because we're made in God's image. And God is a creator, and he made us to create. That's part of being made in God's image on who we are. And that takes a lot of different forms. But that means that there are, there are things in us, since we're made in his image, there are things in us that we mimic parts of God's character in different ways, right? And one of those things is to take something and recreate it into something new. That's what he does, okay? So this whole idea of something new is part of God's creator, and, and we see it all throughout Scripture. Yeah. It's all throughout Scripture. From the moment he created the universe and this planet and people all throughout history, God is making something new. That's what he does from beginning to to end in order to move his plans forward. He's always doing that. Okay, so there's a passage in Isaiah chapter 43. And, um, uh, and if you need Bibles, there are some, Bi hey, um, if, you, do you guys, if you guys want Bibles, there's some behind you. Nate, can you get them? Oh, no, he'll get them. They're, they're right behind you. Nate, get, get them a Bible, would you? Thanks, buddy. So Isaiah, okay, so, so what happened was, okay, so the Israelites... Um, you know, they rebelled against God over and over and over and over again. It was like a never-ending cycle with them. And so it's at this point where Isaiah is trying to encourage them because they were basing everything in their life with God based on what had taken place in the past. They passed down these stories about what happened when they were freed from the Egyptians and God did all those miracles and they talked about it from one generation to another to another to another. And so that's what they were basing their, their relationship with God on was the past. Isaiah wanted to encourage them about looking forward to what God wants to do in the future. Okay, so we're, we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 43, starting in verse 15. Listen to what this says. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator and king. I am the Lord who opened up a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all of its chariots and horses, I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. So he's saying, look, you guys know this story. You've been told this story since birth. This is what you're basing your relationship on me about what I'm doing in your life. But listen to what he says in verse 18. But he says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. Verse 19, for I am about to do something new. That is this Greek word, kadosh. Kadosh. Let's say that, okay? All together. Ready? Kadosh, okay? And the word kadosh has this includes these words like fresh and renewing and rebuilding and repairing that's what it is he goes i'm about to do something brand new okay stop basing your relationship with me on everything that's happened in the past i'm going to do a new thing i'm about to do something new he says see i have already begun do you see it it will make a pathway through the wilderness and I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me. The jackals and the owls too for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself 
and they will someday honor me before the whole world. And so what you need to understand when, when Isaiah's writing this, he's talking about when Jesus comes on the scene. He's giving them a picture. Okay, look, this is what your relationship with God was like before. I'm doing something new. He was talking about when Jesus came, what that was going to be. And so, because the Israelites, you know, they, they physically experienced being um, saved and rescued from the bondage of slavery from the Egyptians. They physically experienced that, right? And, and, but when Jesus comes on the scene, he's saying, listen, you need to understand, it's going to be a rescue of something far more precious than that. Our souls are going to be rescued from the grip of sin and death. That's a whole new rescue. It's as if, this, this is what God's saying. Okay, listen. You thought it was amazing getting rescued from Egypt? You thought that was amazing? He goes, that was nothing compared to what is coming. In fact, in fact, he says, I've already set some things in motion for that to happen. And, and as, if you read more of that passage, he says, I've tried to tell you this. I've tried to numerous times to tell you this, but you keep missing it. He's saying, I'm about to do something brand new. Stop looking at the past. That's where it belongs, in the past. Start looking forward to what I'm about to do because God is never satisfied with the status quo in our lives. Never. Because here's the truth. My journey, your journey, listen to this, is covered by the God's sovereign hand. He is always looking for ways to do something new in my life. Every single day, he's trying to find ways to reconnect with you and do something new in your life. He doesn't want you to stay the way you are. Listen, listen, I say this numerous times here. It's okay for you um, to come here and not be okay. But God doesn't want you to stay that way. He has something new for you. For the inside of you, all throughout the Old Testament, God was breaking ground, pushing through, disrupting things all the time. Sometimes it was through miraculous events. And other times it was through years of wandering. You ever been through years of wandering? I have. You're wandering around. Wondering where is God? He's there. Yeah. He's like saying, he's he's like saying, okay, you're here right now, but I this is where you are right now. But he's saying, but I want you to get to this point. This is where I want you to be. You're here right now. In fact, you've been wandering around, you know, trying to think, probably walking in circles. And he's saying, I want you to move from here, and I want you to go here. This is where I want you to be. That's where I want you to be. And in order to get to this point, something's going to have to change. And he goes, I, I, and, and, so, and, and I might have to shift some things, but you know what the biggest thing is that's going to have to change? is what's inside of you. Yeah. That's what's going to have to change. Yeah. The truth is, new does not always mean trouble-free. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. No. It doesn't mean trouble-free. I don't know where we've gotten that. There's some really bad theology out there. But I'm telling you, if you read your Bible, I don't see that everything becomes nice and wonderful when God starts to do something new in your life. Okay? 
Sometimes new is attached to feeling uncomfortable, maybe even fearful, like this door. Like I've used this door numerous times. Sometimes I put the word fear on there. Maybe it's uncertainty. Maybe it's regret. I don't know what it is that you would put on that door when you think about something new in your life. Okay? But at some point, when God says, I want to do something new, at some point, we have to walk up to this door and walk through it for Him to do something new in our lives, right? So, um, with that in mind, when we choose to do that, what God does, His, His Spirit kadoshes Rebuilds, yeah. renews, yeah. refreshes something on the inside of us. Yeah. That's what he was telling the Israelite. I'm stop it with the past. Yeah. He goes, I'm about to do something new in you. Yeah. Paul wrote about this. Yeah. When he was writing to a bunch of Christ followers in the city of Corinth, listen to what he wrote this. He said this. He goes, this is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. Yeah. Do you ever feel like your body is just like, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? But you know what Paul says? Okay, even though that's happening, there's something new that's taking place on the inside of you. He says, for our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce in us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So Paul is using a really interesting word here. He's using this word that produces for us something called glory. Yeah. What the heck is that? So... He's using this word glory and what it means is is that it has this connection of something that becomes very obvious. There is something that becomes very apparent. And he's saying, look, look, okay. As you allow God to do something new in you, as you decide, I'm going to walk through this door called fear or regret or whatever it is, I'm going to walk through that door he starts to do something on the inside of you that becomes very apparent yeah. to people around you and to yourself. All of a sudden, there's something that starts to happen on the inside of you that people notice. And they're like, I don't know what's going on with you, but there's something that's taking place. Something is changing on the inside of you. And... The other part of that is what that is that's taking place, Paul says, that's going to last forever. Forever. Right? So a little further in that same letter, Paul says this. He says, this means, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. In fact, if we were to read that, like how the, the Greek would put that, is it would be more like the old life is gone, the new life is continually taking over. Continually taking over. Okay? In fact, when Paul said that, he was alluding to a verse in Isaiah that says this, Isaiah 65, 17. Look, I am creating new heavens and a new earth and no one will even think about the old ones anymore. That's what he was alluding to, that imagery. He's given us that same imagery like when Jesus comes back, when Jesus comes back, that newness, 
that we are continually, God is continually like, like invading our lives with that, that newness. When Jesus comes back, that newness is going to be overwhelmingly evident that it's going to take place and we're going to see it and experience it. Right? And as we continue to walk in Christ, it's that imagery of the newness that he wants to do in and through us constantly. All right, so, so in three weeks, in three weeks, we're going to experience something new here. Okay? Uh, we're going to start, we're going to shift our Sunday morning service from our south campus to here. And do, do you know what I'm really excited about? I'm excited about not just the change of location, but I'm excited about what God's going to do on the inside of us yeah. through that. Yeah. That's what I'm excited about. Like, moving forward, okay, as we're thinking about moving forward here at TNC for over the next three years, okay, I'm thinking, okay, so there's, there's three types of people that we are going to need yeah. here at TNC, yeah. okay? Three types of people, and I'm just going to tell you what they are, and then I'm going to explain them. We're going to need weavers, investors, and dreamers. Weavers, investors, and dreamers. So you're like, okay, a weaver? What, what do you mean a weaver? So I, I looked at some different things as far as people that weave or whatever and listen to how they, they explain this whole thing about weaving. They, they say this. They, they say it's individual threads of tomorrow's tapestry. Individual threads of tomorrow's tapestry. Have you guys ever seen a tapestry? Like, okay, um, we might say rug, okay? But a tapestry, famous tapestries, like they're like as big as that wall. And when you think about what goes into one of those, I'm like, some of them look like a painting. But it's a tapestry. It's not printed on, but it's the way they weave individual threads through it amazing stuff but anyway um but in regards to us a weaver okay listen to this a weaver knows that every kindness every thoughtful act every encouraging word every testimony shared every forgiving response Every smile, these all seemingly insignificant actions when viewed in individually, weavers have an amazing ability to see how all our threads fit into this full tapestry of who God calls us to be as a faith community. That's what a weaver does, right? And they just keep weaving and weaving and weaving and weaving. Okay, so that's in the weavers. The next one are what I call investors. Those are, so, so this, this is a little bit different. Like investors, investors recognize people as immortals. Like they're more than irritants or ways to advance agendas. An investor, listen to this, there's a guy... C.S. Lewis, a famous theologian, writer from the 50s and 60s. Listen to what he says about this. He says, it is a serious thing to live in a society of possible gods and goddesses in lower G's to remember that the dullest and most uninteresting person you talk to may one day be a creature which, if you saw it now, you would strongly be tempted to worship. Now listen to what he says. There are no ordinary people. You have never talked to a mere mortal. He says nations, cultures, arts, civilizations, these are mortal. And their life is to ours as the life of a gnat. 
But, listen, but it is immortals who we jo joke with, work with, marry, snub, and exploit. Investors see people as more, more than what we normally see them. Investors are motivated to invest in things that last. How do they invest? You know what they do? They open their mouths to tell the good news. They open their hearts to share the story. They open their hands to help the hurting. They keep on investing over and over and over again. Okay, so we have weavers, we have investors, and then we have dreamers. Dreamers. Dreamers, now listen to this. Dreamers, they let their minds and their imaginations rise above the temporariness of this world while touching the reality of the next. Because this world is temporary. And people that are dreamers, they, they kind of rise above that. And when's, let me ask you this, when's the last time that you meditated on what is in store for you when you're done here on earth? When's the last time you thought about, huh, what do I need, what do I have to look forward to when I'm done here? Okay? I want to encourage you to read Revelation chapter 21 and 22. Because, see, I, I talk to a lot of people that go, well, you don't know really what heaven's going to be like. Yes, I do. Yeah. Oh, yes, I do. It's right in Revelation. In fact, it'll help you to see what it looks like. It'll help you to see what it's going to be like. It'll help you to see how you feel. It'll help you to see how you kind of interact. I mean, there's all of those things that are in there. Okay? When you meditate on that, listen. Listen. You start to be filled with joy and peace and courage and perseverance. If there's a new sense of priority, fulfillment and contentment when you do that. Okay? Dreamers, dreamers, they look past all of that. What's going on here? And they go, oh, you know what? Okay, I understand that. But you need to understand, you know what? There will be a day. When all of this stuff, this knuckleheaded stuff, this will be over. And I'll be there with Jesus someday. Okay, now listen. Here's what's more amazing about this. As we let God lead us to something new, His Spirit will help all of us to become weavers and investors and dreamers. Every one of us. So in three weeks, we're going to move that service from the South Campus here to the North Campus. And for some of you, maybe, maybe that might be a little bit of a faith stretcher. I don't know. Some people from the South Campus, it might be a faith stretcher from them. I don't know. Some, some people are really excited. There's a lot of people that are excited yeah. to, like, come down here. Oh, yeah. Right? And be a part of this, right? But again, again, every time when that happens, there's this door that God is asking us to think about where we're going to go. Are we going to go through this or not? Yeah. Right? Every time. He knows what's on the other side. And he's asking us the question, are you ready for something new? Are you ready for God to do something new in you? Are you ready to walk up to the door and step through it? And I want to say, get ready for God to do something new in you. All right? So I have a couple questions. We're going to sing a song together. Well, we're going to actually listen to this song. I don't care if you sing to it. You can if you want. But listen to this. Um, during this last song, there's a couple questions I want you to ponder. Okay, it's this. Here's the first one. Do I want God to do something new inside of me? That's the first question. The second one is, 
Am I willing to step through this door, whatever that is, in order to experience something new? Am I willing to do that? Those of you that are on Facebook Live, I want to tell you thank you for joining us tonight. We love our Facebook Live family. Um, going to continue to pray for you. And uh, take this week to ponder those questions because God, he's waiting to do something new on the inside of you. And so our prayer is, is that you walk through that door and you let him do that. So we'll see you guys next week.